it's a great and I suggest proceeding uh, by inviting um, the next speaker who um, is to deliver the inaugural speech on the day seven theme uh, about agrobiodiversity, agroecology and sustainable agriculture in food systems, mountains. And this guest of honor, Dr. Devinda Sharma, is a distinguished agriculture, food and trade and policy analyst and an award-winning journalist um, and uh, a fellow of Cambridge University. And it's a great honor and pleasure to give the words to you. And the floor is yours, please. Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, the Grassland Institutes, uh, and also to the other partners uh, for giving me this opportunity uh, to, to uh, speak uh, at uh, this particular forum, which I find is very fascinating. I'm joining you from a place called Chandigarh in uh, Northwest India, which is at the foot of the Himalayas. And uh, my upbringing has also been in the Himalayas. So I'm quite familiar with the kind of crisis and the opportunities that the mountains uh, offer. You know, when we discuss uh, the agrobiodiversity, uh, the agroecology and the uh, food systems uh, in the mountains, uh, or let's say in the Himalayas particularly, uh, which as we all know, if you look at the Hindu Kush mountain region uh, is, uh, you know, uh, it has about 210 million people living there. And uh, we all know that the communities actually are mostly agrarian and they live on natural resources. So, but unfortunately what has happened over the years when we talk of agro ecological system and the food systems, we have uh, tend to uh, borrow the, the food systems from the plains and from the flat regions of the country. And uh, the universities, when we talk of bringing science uh, to the mountain areas to see that the development takes place, we have actually borrowed the model from uh, these uh, uh, areas and uh, ensured that the mountains also go into what is called as intensive culture, uh, you know, agriculture practices. So we have universities in, uh, in, in the Himalayas or in the other regions of the world where the kind of curriculum that the universities are following is primarily the same kind of a curriculum which which uh, operates uh, downstream or in the in the plains or the uh, you know flat regions of the country. So that kind of a model which we have borrowed and uh, implemented in the mountains is actually also responsible for the kind of uh, unsustainable farming practices that we have introduced uh, over the years. I'm sure in the session on agrobiodiversity and agroecology on day seven, we will be discussing all this in more details. But I thought it is very important to. To, to point this out, why is it that we do not have a curriculum even now for the mountain areas, the kind of agriculture research or the food system or the food farming system that research should take place in the mountains is, a, a, you know, borrowed from what is happening elsewhere. And that is what has exhibited the crisis in the mountain areas also. We have heard the people saying, and we all know that also, that uh, you know, water comes from the Himalayas or in the mountain regions. And we know that uh, the uh, traditional communities are the custodians of water. But we also at the same time find that there is a terrible, terrible uh, shortage of water or crisis uh, in, in the mountain regions. You know, the people who are supposed to protect uh, the water, uh, you know, uh, coming out from those regions are the ones who are, who are faced with a kind of a deficit. And there is a kind of a situation that is emanating or emerging where as a result of which water shortage also is one factor why people are pulled down or pulled into the, into the, uh, the urban centers uh, for a livelihood. Uh, that is one factor which I think is important, and I'm sure if the universities were to adapt their research programs to the local needs of the communities and local needs or the, or the kind of an environment that exists around the areas that where we are trying to bring in modern research or modern science into it, there would be a kind of a sea change that we would see in the, in, in the food systems that the mountains should evolve. And this is not only particular about one region, but all across the world, we find that the people have to learn, or we have to also learn from the people there, the communities there to see what kind of farming system should we be taking care of or taking into those uh, regions so that, you know, we can have a sustainable kind of a, a farming, uh, you know, food systems evolved 
in the, in the in the in the in the near future now the fact of the matter is that when we talk of a digitalization when we talk of privatization and so on we do not distinguish that the mountains are a a, a special niche area that needs a different kind of a focus and i think that is where uh, the the effort must shift to we always talk about agroecology and agrobiodiversity. We know that it is very important to take these technologies up there. But also, let us not forget all over the world that I find that the, as when it comes to the food systems, we are all talking about the right kind of initiatives that need to be taken. You know, the, the right kind of initiative means, yes, we need to bring in agroecology. We need to get away from intensive farming systems to more agro, agroecological farming system in tune with the agrobiodiversity that exists in those areas. Yes, it is all very true, but replacing the intensive farming systems with the agroecological farming systems, in my understanding, is not the end of it. And that is, of course, not leading or is not going to lead to a kind of a situation where, where I would like to see a kind of a reverse migration taking place because people who have migrated from the mountains down into the plains are the ones who do not find livelihood options very attractive in the mountains anymore. I think we need to take it back and that can be only possible if we try to assure not only for the mountains but for the rest of the, uh, of the community also everywhere that you know, agriculture is the only sector where farmers are actually at the bottom of the pyramid. When I say at the bottom of the pyramid, whether it is in America, whether it is in the European Union, or whether it is in developing countries, the fact of the matter is that the, uh, we all talk about the food systems, but the food systems that we talk about, uh, the one factor which is missing from those food systems, and I think which is going to be, or which is likely to be the answer to the kind of sustainable farming system that we all talk about is to provide farmers the rightful income in their hand. Now that is something which we leave it to the technologies and so on that will be that we'll try to bring in and that we hope will raise production and productivity and that would mean more income flowing into the hands of farmers. Well, the question is, and the fact is that it hasn't happened anywhere in the world. Whether we are in China, whether we are in America, whether we are in Europe, as I said earlier, the farm income is at the lowest. And the result is we see a massive spate of suicides all over the world. And whether it is in America, America, I was looking at the recent data, you know, the suicide in the rural areas in, in America is 3.5 times more than the national average. But this is in America. And if you look at in, in European Union, a study way back had said very clearly that one farmer quits agriculture every day in Europe. And if you look at country like India, we know this, you know, the, the suicide rate is uh, very uh, large in India. And that is also because one of the huge crises that prevails in agriculture is farm distress. Now, I think unless we attempt or make an attempt to see that, you know, we uh, are able to pull these people out of the farm distress that prevails, and this can happen only if we are able to ensure a couple of things, you know, one, of course, is that the income model in these mountain regions should be based on the ecosystems, and therefore we have now a wonderful initiative from the United Nations in the form of TEEB, the, the economics of uh, ecosystem and biodiversity that should be woven in to see that the, that the farm incomes are actually based on the ecosystem services the mountains provide. And that I think is a very important uh, way forward. And at the same time, we must also ensure that these people who are living in the mountains, uh, besides this way of computing their income, they also have a guaranteed form of a income uh, support coming to them. You know, we, we cannot leave markets or these mountain areas to be dependent on markets. Markets haven't helped farming community raise or enhance their income levels anywhere in the world. And if it hasn't happened anywhere in the world, I do not know why we go on believing that, you know, uh, markets will take care of the farm incomes in these mountains also. No, I think we need to evolve a kind of a system which assures or provides farmers with an assured income that which can provide him lively security and at the same time, which can also ensure that he is able to put in all that uh, uh, resources into uh, you know, an attractive way if he gets the resources into the kind of activities that he undertakes to to not only provide a kind of a food security or a food kind of a system or a food system that is more valid and sustainable, but at the same time, 
I think we need a model which is economical. And unless that economic system is laid out, and I will request everyone to focus on not only leaving it to livelihood options in you know uh, integrating with the animals and uh, with the natural resources and so on and so forth, but also try to evolve a kind of a, a income level or a, a mechanism which can ensure uh, income security to the farmers in the mountains. And I, I in the finally, I would like to say that you know these two initiatives, one you know changing the form of agriculture research that needs to be taken into the mountains is one area that we need to uh, revisit and re uh, you know uh, evaluate and see whether this is relevant for the mountains or we are only uh, to, you know uh, cutting and pasting uh, the kind of a system that already prevails in the rest of the world. That is one. And secondly, of course, as I said, the income levels are very, very important. After all, let's not forget each one of us works for a higher income. And I think the people who live on the mountains also aspire to get a higher income. And we need to evolve a kind of a mechanism by which we empower those communities. Uh, maybe it is direct, maybe it is also indirect to evolve a kind of a food security model, which is food secure, not only food secure, but also income secure and i think if these two things are woven in or are you know when we look into agro, agro role of agro biodiversity or agroecology and the food systems i think that this is something uh, which we need to add on to that kind of a thinking that we are evolving and i'm sure on day seven um, our colleagues will focus on on these aspects of the kind of a crisis that agriculture faces in the mountains and this i'm sure is the way forward uh, hopefully um, uh, you know uh, this, the discussions here or the deliberations here will will kind of lay out a kind of a pathway as to where the mountain systems or the food systems in the mountains should move on to. With that, I'd like to put an end here to what I'm going to speak. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your inspiring speech have brought up so many discussions in the chat. And uh, it, thank you for your passionate involvement in addressing the topic and bringing it all up. Uh, it's amazing. And I think that uh, with such people and such organizations like you, um, it is the change that can be made, right? And uh, once people are discussing and agreeing and addressing um, those points, which you mentioned, and like, I would not repeat them because it was like full and complete. Um, once the discussions appear, the solutions would also come, right? So thank you very much. And we will be looking forward to addressing this issue on the day seven. Uh, and uh, def it will definitely lead to some meaningful outcomes and really hope that it would contribute a lot to the finding the best solutions. Thank you.